I'm coming to you, Mr. Ashibwe, and I'll give you the final word, Ms. Apenu. The president, in that interview with France 24, said that it is their behavior that lands them in problem with the police and the courts. That was referring to the arrest of the 53 Democracy Hub protesters. Uh, well, today the courts granted uh, 21 of them bail. We've also heard uh, Dr. Mahmoud Rubaumia, the flag bearer of the MPP, saying that he would ensure that small-scale mining happens, but in a non-destructive way. We're talking about commitment towards or ahead of the, 20, uh, the, the December 7 general election. What kind of measures do we need now to ensure that we're able to get some level of commitment ahead of the elections? Let me just disagree with Kofi first, that the fact that we cannot manage. I've, I've told you that even in, there's a pilot that has been run for the whole issue of the excavators and all of that. It's not for lack of management. It's the will to be able to do it. It's the fact that those who have to do it themselves find themselves complicit in it. But I think the solutions that we need to resolve these issues are properly outlined in what uh, organized labor has said, in what the media coalition has said. The government needs to, to place the state of emergency on the water bodies, the buffers of the water bodies. Because, see, uh, uh, the constitution is clear. It does not have to be a national one. It can be in part. So in that particular place, we definitely need to get the military, get everybody, including the local people, involved in ensuring that we stop the degradation, we stop the destruction. What is happening in the forest reserves, we deal with it. What is happening on our water bodies? Mm. If we are saying to ourselves that most of these people on these water bodies are foreigners, then if that's, it means there's attack from within. Once we get the president acting, then we get the, other, uh, the two political parties, the leading political parties, their presidential candidates, to sign on and say what the president has started doing. We also support it. Get them to say it openly so that mm. nobody goes to say anything else. Well. Because mm. on the 8th, 7th of January, one of them would have to continue doing that because within two months, three months, you are not going to be able to solve the problem as we have now. Indeed. Let me just get in, in about 60 seconds, if you would kindly help us uh, do that. Uh, just getting your final word on really how sustained you think we should do this ahead of December 7. Well, we just cannot go on like this. Something has to be done about this. And all the first order, second order, the third order you know, streams, they need to be protected. If we stop all the, you know, pol maybe the pollutants going to the streams, we will be, you know, safe. That has to be done. There's no, there's no tomorrow for that. Exactly. We need to do that now. immediately now. And oh. there should be no compromise. Yes. At all, and I'm sorry about that. And now, coming, we've all been talking about the mercury, you know, pollution, mm -hmm. which goes into the environment. Look, there has been an alternative to the use of mercury developed in this country way back over eight, eight years ago, nine years ago. Why, have we, why, why, why are we using it? If we did that, we would then at law the PNDC law 217, which is the Mercury Act or law. And then once we implement that, then there will be no need for use of one, Mercury at all. Mm. We've signed on to the Minamata in our convention, and, the, and it has kicked in in, what, in 2017. We are in 2024, and we are still having Mercury on our existing books. Why? Let's act let now. Us, let us act now. Let us use the direct smelting method, do away with mercury, outlaw mercury completely, and then ensure that, look, the, the, by the country or the president has all the forces behind him. Mm. If he wants to get this thing done, the time is now. We cannot wait Thank for Thank you so much, Mr. Richard Kofi Apenu, for joining us on Agenda tonight. Uh, also, thank you to you, uh, Mr. Kenashigbe, for also joining us. Kofi Bento, joining us for our video call. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as well. That will be it for Agenda tonight. My name is Beatrice Edu. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Join us again next week, Monday, coming up shortly. It's Ghana tonight. Stay with us. <laughs>
That is also not a small-scale mining firm. When you go into most of the people who are in the forest reserves mining, none of them are the small-scale miners. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to make that distinction that there are small-scale miners who are mining very responsibly, and there are even large-scale miners, some of them also mining. So the illegality has nothing to do with the scale. It just has to do with people who are not doing the right things. Some of them have been given licenses. They then give the license to people, or they are not mining at the right places that they are supposed to be mining. So I think when we start making the conversation, it is very important to really separate small-scale mining from the illegality, and the illegality straddles all the, the sectors. That's very, very important. So we shouldn't ban small-scale mining, that's what you're saying. So I'm saying, I'm saying, so if you go back again, read what the, uh, the, the, the media coalition said, read what um, uh, TUC also said. They talked about banning every mine. You see, you, for the water bodies and the buffers, there's no ban because it's an illegality. So mm -hmm. it's just enforcing the laws that we refuse to, to do. It is in the forest reserves that the acts that you buy all sorts of money, both legal and illegal, in the in the, the forest reserve. So if you are if you're a small scale miner in the small uh, in the forest reserve, that is where the call is for you to be banned. But on the water bodies and the buffers, that one, and then also you have the situation where some mining concessions almost cross the buffers, and so that definitely has to be revoked. So those licenses have to be revoked. But if you are a small-scale miner and you're not mining close to any water, you are, you, unless you want to go the El Salvador way, where we then say that all mining, so then it will not be only small-scale, it will be every mining has to stop. Have to be revoked, but at this stage, we haven't seen any action or any posture, as it were, that gives the assurance that they are going to revoke any license, whether legal or illegal. But that's, that's the pain, and it's the reason why you see that Organized labor then would say that they would go ahead. Because when you read that statement that has been issued by the Ministry of Information, and all of it is present tense. Everything is present. There's nothing that it would have... Because consider the fact that the media coalition, all of those people that had written, uh, Academy of Arts and Sciences wrote almost last year, asking for some actions to be taken. All we are hearing is well, well, well. Some of them are even the things that we've done that have brought us to 14,000 NTUs. So definitely, the president is not showing us that any action will be taken. Typically, let me give you an example of LI-2462. The president could, you know, parliament could sit, actually sit virtually. The new standing orders gives parliament the opportunity to sit virtually. So they don't need to even reconvene. But again, parliament convened when there was some, uh, what do you call it? Was it some tax exemptions? That one they came. But the situation where we are dying, the situation where we are being poisoned, was saying that as a state will not. The issue about uh, forming, uh, the, you know, being able to deal with the situation. And then we are told that enforcement are going to be done. The last two weeks, I went to uh, Nkoko. This was after the, you know, this committee had been set up and we were told that, you know, the regional ministers were going to get in charge. Sitting in my car on the road between Enyinim and Nkoko, there were, uh, you know, galamsias that you could see from the road. You've seen the Minerals Commission uh, CEO talk about the fact that right behind Enyinim, you know, Galamsia is taking place. But so, he's still issuing license. Uh, well, I watched him at the, at the assurances committee earlier today. He mm. still talked about issuing licenses. Yes, so again, so me, I'm, all I'm saying is that, yes, the issue about the number of licenses, and I've had them, so maybe John might be some of the people who say it, they say that, because in the past, there was a complaint also about this from the small-scale miners who said that, uh, you know, uh, they had licenses that had not been signed by the minister and all of that. And I'm hearing the argument being said that, ah, if we don't give the licenses, they'll go. But the question I also will ask the Minerals Commissioner, do you have the capacity to regulate the number of licenses that you have given? Because if you give the licenses, and you see, mining is a, such a very heavy technical job that has a lot of risk. So if you issue the licenses, you need to then have the capacity to manage everyone. But, you, you know, again, this, uh, so again, this is the same Minerals Commission. Said that they were going to do this tracking of uh, excavators and all of that. These, the pilots have been done. The, it's worked very well. You ask yourself, why is it that up to today? This has not been rolled out fully. That was the question that Frimpo and Boateng asked in his report. Exactly. Because if you do, then we'll be able to tell where those excavators are, geofence where they are. 
And you ask yourself, why are the people importing all of these excavators into this country? It is not our young people who are being arrested, who are in the, in the, in the jails and all of that. Too. It's the rich people who are behind us, and we can find them. Yes. Because once you do that, you know, you get the VIN numbers. So once he moves out, you'll be able to tell who imported it, who registered it, and all of that. And there's supposed to be a collaboration between the uh, Minerals Commission and the DVLA to ensure that all of those vehicles will properly be registered. And we have a solution in place. But that's not hard to do. At all. We have a solution yeah. in place. Well, Mr. Shigbe, um, he just said that there's been a total policy failure. I know you've been on this campaign for a long time as well. Just tell us really, from your perspective, how you think the, the, the politics in this business has really impacted us. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, my colleague talks about policy failure, but looks at it only from 2017. The reason why the, um, the media coalition against Galamsey was formed was because as we were approaching 2016, the turbidity of the water got very, very bad. So that early 2017, uh, January, February, you started having the media starting to complain because the turbidity had gotten very bad. So the issues about the policy, if it's really policy failure, then the policy failure, you know, has continued for a very long time. But when you talk about the partisan politics, it is the, the elephant in the room. Let me give you a typical example. In 2016, when the current president was the uh, presidential candidate for the opposition, he was in Obwasi talking about the fact that when he comes, it's not true that when he comes into government, he was going to ban Galamsey. So that when we started the fight, you had people playing those voices against him. This is 2017, uh, 2016. Then fast forward to 2020. There was Kweku Bwain, an NDC uh, uh, communication, a deputy communication executive, standing in the theater of actually a crime being committed and saying that they should go and vote. You know, the, uh, the 7th of January, they should come back and come and continue their fight. Then you move. So then as uh, uh, Operation Vanga 2017, all of that started and the work was starting. As we were getting close to the election, you saw that because of the activity of the opposition that you saw Operation Vanguard, they withdrew the military from the Operation Vanguard. You know, they became only the police. And so then the fight itself then was not wholehearted because of the partisanship that had uh, gotten into it. And the MPP will be telling you that they lost seats because of that. That even needs to be interrogated further. But now come fast forward to 2024. You saw an MPP presidential candidate in the presence of the Western Regional Minister, uh, you know, meeting these Galamsees and telling them that they were forming a WhatsApp group. And when, uh, you know, uh, these people come attacking them, the minister was also going to be on WhatsApp group. They should report it. Then you had the, uh, the former president, uh, His Excellency John Mama, talk about the facts that when he comes into office, he was going to grant amnesty to those who have been arrested, mm. you know, for the Galamsee. Then you had the MP, an MPP member of parliament who is a doctor. Also talk about the fact that, you know, when uh, they are not going to stop the Galam Doctor, are you afraid? That's exactly. a recent video. Exactly. So you see, the partisanship has been the reason why this thing has failed. And again, let me, I, I like to use examples. You remember the Speaker of Parliament was in Parliament telling his parliamentarians that the, some of them were involved in Galam Both parties have... Uh, how do you call it? Galamse funds either directly or indirectly funding them. And it's the reason why we are not able to deal with it. Again, we had the NDC and MPP have almost equal number of seats in parliament. But LI 2462 went through parliament 21 days and it was passed. So till we take out the issue of the partisanship out of this fight and realize the fact that as a country, we're dealing with a canker that is of genocidal proportions, and we need to deal with it together. We would really not be able to win this fight. So for us, the media coalition against Galamse, by extension, the Ghana coalition against Galamse, we're not going to get, we're not going to allow any part, uh, political party to take advantage of this fight. We're not going to allow the situation where they come into the big cities and they won't come and say, oh, you are not fighting Galamse, but then they will go in there and then be saying other things. 
we all need to coalesce against this particular crime that is being waged against us, where people are dying, where renal diseases are on the increase, and find ways in which all of us would say that enough is enough, whatever things we need to do, before we are even able to reset. We need to start saying to ourselves that, you know, you need to stop. So that's why you look into uh, the, the statement issued by uh, the Ministry of Information, and all you see in it is well, well wood. There's nothing about what has been done. Mm. And it's also missing in there is the state of emergency. Because you see, what you, and you remember what happened to us when COVID hit. We saw it as a crisis. So that the president immediately told all of us, you know, a, a, a shutdown was done in uh, the, the Accra, uh, you know, in the Kumasi areas. We're told to stay indoors because we realized the fact that you know, our lives were at risk. And currently, that's what is happening with this Galam Sefer. So it should, for you, we shouldn't be surprised that we are uh, having this kind of like a daisical attitude from both parties uh, as regards to dealing with the issue. Correct. You go back and look again at their manifestos. So you take most manifestos, and they all seem to be just trying to, you know, replicate those who are involved in it and talk about things that they will do. Some have a lot of interesting things. But the thing that will halt this and let us reset. It's absent. 